Good afternoon, Gary. Hi. Uh, I know you get this que asked this question every week, but I'm going to phrase it slightly differently. You know, this is now your sixth week in the job, going into your fifth game in the job. The more you do the role, do you get more of a taste for it? Do you start to feel more of part of the furniture here and that you could do it permanently? Um, I think I, I aim to manage a, f a football team permanently. That has always been my goal since I started coaching. Um, the the more I do this, obviously, that the better I'm going to get at it. Um, but it doesn't change my outlook on on what's going on here. I'm really really happy with the, the situation as it is, and happy to take it game by game. But you will start to feel, I suppose, more part of the furniture here as well. And even if a new manager at this stage were to come in, you'd want to stay on as first team coach because the players obviously have that respect for you. Now. I think I've I've been here a well relatively long time in football now anyway, so. Um, I, I feel at, at home here because I've been here for 18 months. Uh, I get on great with everybody from um, upstairs with Richard Hughes, Neil Blake, um, to the guys that we work closely with over in the in the, in the pavilion and the training ground. So, yeah, I, I love it here, and yeah, I'm no no rush to get away. Uh, obviously, still unbeaten under your man management as well, but it has been two months to the day now that home fans saw a goal here. And I know it's the hardest thing to do when you're a newly promoted club is, is score goals in the Premier League, but how do you get that elusive goal here in front of the home fans? Uh, yeah, firstly, I think two months to the day is very misleading um, because the, we had one home game called off. Um, one was against Arsenal that um, is, is obviously going to be tough to score in and wasn't. Um, obviously, I wasn't taking the team at that point. so. We failed to score against Wolves and Brentford at home, which is obviously is what it is. We'd like to score goals against Wolves and Brentford. We're we're working at it, um, but the boys have the boys have really brought something in the last few weeks that has given us a chance to be competitive in every game, um, and we we hope to stay like that. And of course, we wanna we wanna cause teams more problems than we have going forward. But it um, yeah, but not at not at the expense of causing ourselves problems. You will be aware as a player of your experience and not a coach of your experience that there is such thing as a good and bad time to play teams and as recently as four or five days ago Leicester looked short of confidence and now they've got that big first win of the season under their belt. They'll be coming here with a bit more confidence, wouldn't they? Yeah, I think um having watched all their games, they've been they were very unfortunate to be on one point um before the Forest game of against Man United. They were dominant, controlled the ball, really good side, um, Tottenham. Very, very good away at Tottenham. I lost very late on, but were, were the dominant side. So they're, they're a very, very good team. Um, the result against Nottingham Forest didn't didn't surprise me. I thought that that was coming for them. I expected them to um, to turn it around, and I don't expect them to be anywhere near the bottom of the table come the end of the come the end of the season. Looking at um, how they've played the last few weeks, I've got a top coach, top players. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a, a real real test for us. Just one final question from me, the man who continues to get all the plaudits in the Premier League and in Europe now as well, Erling Haaland. Bournemouth remain the only club that he hasn't scored against all season. So are any managers trying to pick up the phone and say, Gary, what's the secret to stop Erling Haaland? No, I, mean, I wasn't taking that game, so I can take no credit for uh, You're on the dog. Uh, yeah, so no, not, nobody has called me yet. And um, my phone's on do not disturb most of the time at the minute because we're quite busy. <laughs> what is the secret? How do you stop him? I don't know. I don't know. No, if you, if yeah, if you, if you stop him, someone else will score against you for Man City, as as we found. Yeah, yeah. Gary, just picking up on what Jamie said there about the goals. Um, obviously, Leicester have shipped five and six in, in a couple of recent games as well. Given the two home games you had against Wolves and Brentford, and two defense, defensively solid and well set up teams, does Leicester coming here present you with a better opportunity to try and improve those goal scoring stats? Um, yeah, m maybe. I think. Um, they are a different, it is a different test, Leicester. Um, they're extremely good with the ball. Uh, mm. They do, I think they've dominated possession in every game they've played. I think they've had more than their fair share. Um, so they're a, they're a real good side with the ball. Uh, but there are opportunities to try and hurt them if we if we can be good enough in, in our moments. Um, and yeah, I think I think this club, if you, even if you go back a, a, a long way, you, back to the, the, the Winter Garden, um, meetings and things. Um, we, they used to be in sort of underdogs, and we sort of strive in, and, and we succeed, and we're, we're really comfortable with that. Um, and it's something that one of our big strengths, you know, is that this club has always managed to find a way to to fight against the odds, and and 
most games at this level we're we're going to be underdogs and um that's fine from outside but that's that's not what we believe in the changing room we're always we're always ready we believe we can be competitive um and let Leicester come in here gives us a another opportunity to, to hopefully show how strong and resilient we are defensively but also to to cause them problems and with the way you've solidified things, you might feel maybe the expectations starting to rise with people thinking you should be winning home games against bottom half teams. Do you take that as a compliment in a way that people are now expecting more of you? Um, no, it doesn't. I don't, I don't. Yeah, it doesn't affect me at all. I just look at Leicester as a ne the next challenge. Um, Wolves and Wolves and Brentford are gone. Obviously, we reviewed them and we we learned from them things that we did well, things that we didn't do so well, um, and we try and improve them. Um, so let Leicester come in is just a, a completely new challenge for us. I wanted to ask you about a couple of individuals briefly. And Marcus Sinesi, who obviously came in with a baptism of fire, trying to stop Man City and, and Liverpool. I know you commented a couple of weeks back that you've been really impressed with his attitude in training. Um, I think he was, you know, you might agree, he's been one of the standout players the last couple of weeks defensively. How how much progress has he made, and how much has he needed these last couple of games to help him settle? He's made loads of progress. Came from. Uh, a team and a league that the, the football is very different to, to what he was going to come up against here. Um, he had to work hard. We had to work hard with him to, to help him adapt. Um, and I think to go to St. James's Park um, and put in a display that he did and then to come up against Ivan Tony and, and some of the pressure that Brentford put on him um, and stand up to it shows that he's, he's come a long way in the last few weeks. Um, we, we continue to work with him and, and, and try and help him improve. And has Jordan Zamora made similar progress, having had a tough start to life in the Premier League? Yeah, I mean Jay Z's great. He's yeah, he's relentless in his attitude. You can, he's always smiling, always bubbly, always ready to work, always ready to improve. Um, and yeah, so when Jay Z, whenever asked, he's he's always always willing to carry out whatever you ask him. So um, yeah, great lad, and he'll continue to improve. Of course, he's only young. Loads of loads of improvement left in him. So. Um, Similar to most of the boys, really, we work with all of them on on areas we feel we can help them. Just finally, for me, as an England fan, would you like to see James Madison in the England World Cup squad? Uh, I hope Saturday dents his chances. <laughs> um, but yeah, I haven't really thought about it. As yeah, I don't know. I can't. There's so many good players in and around it. I haven't looked at the numbers or who should or who shouldn't. Um, I'll stick to trying to pick my own squad. Hi Gary, can I just get uh, an injury roll call if we start with Joe Wilson and Pearson? I think they were close. Yeah, they've had a really good week. Um, both of them have trained all week with us. Really good to get them back out there. Um, so yeah, that's that's been a positive. And Lloyd Kelly, how's he how's he doing? Yeah, Lloyd won't be with us again this weekend. Um, he's obviously a week closer than he was last week, but. Um, yeah, this this weekend comes too too quick for him. And then Ryan Fredericks and Junior Stanislas—they weren't in the match this squad last weekend. Are they available for selection this week? So they've both had good weeks. Ryan Fredericks has been been really promising on the grass. Um, done some really good work. Um, Junior's coming along as well. Maybe not quite so so far along as Ryan, Ben, and Joe. Uh, but ju Junior's Junior's made good strides. This weekend's theme is no room for racism. How much more inclusive do you feel like the game is now compared to when you were playing? Yeah, there's there's a huge difference. I think just the the education around it. I remember being a young footballer in some circumstances. I think it was away in Lithuania or somewhere as an England under 19, and you saw racist abuse going on, and you what you weren't educated enough, or you didn't really know how you were supposed to deal with things like that. Um, Whereas now I think it's we've, we've made big strides. Of course, we can we can still improve, but I feel like the education around it and how, how everyone feels around it now is has come on a long way. This year's theme is allies. How important is it for players, staff, fans to be allies <coughs> for those around them that are you know potentially subject to racism and abuse? Yeah, it's massive. It's massive. In I mean, whenever you're going through difficult times, having people around you that can help and. Making sure we're there for, for the for the boys if there's any issues around it is 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 huge. So yes, real positive.